Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome to my preview of Crystal Palace versus Liverpool. It is the second game of the Premier League campaign. We are top of the Premier League, as you will know. Everything's very positive at the moment. We're all waiting for it to come crashing down, but for the moment I'm still feeling very positive and I don't think that crashing down is going to come anytime soon, especially this Monday night at Crystal Palace at Selhurst so Park. I'm annoyed that we have to wait until Monday to see these Reds again. After Sunday against West Ham, that 4-0 win, I just wanted to see us play over and over and over again. I'm upset we don't have a midweek game. I want to see us play twice a week um, it's all great fun but yes so we're going to see our rivals play before us um, let's see if the pressure is already on them or not um, Man City play Huddersfield so I doubt they're going to have any troubles there although they are missing Kevin De Bruyne as we know um, but yeah it's Crystal Palace it's a Monday night it's Selhurst Park it will remind you all of that uh, the game was it five seasons ago now 13-14 when we lost that 3-0 lead it didn't cost us a title as people like to say it did but it did obviously kind of finish us off um, and yeah, people seem to think Selhurst Park is like some kind of bogey ground for us now, or like there's still a hoodoo. I was listening to the Totally Football show and they were saying, is the, Crystal, is the Selhurst Park hoodoo going to be the thing that kind of dents Liverpool's title hopes this early on in the season? And I was thinking, I'm sure we've won there the last three seasons. The last season, Mo Salah, season before the 4-2, and the season before that, Christian Benteke, which was uh, a crazy day uh, in that way. And, but yeah, we were not good at Selhurst Park last year at all, uh, but we got the job done. Uh, it was obviously in the midst of a European run. Now our minds are fully focused on the task in hand. Um, Crystal Palace obviously got off to a good start to the season with their 2-0 win at Fulham, uh, but we got off to a tremendous start with that game uh, against West Ham. So it's London opposition again, and I'm going to be at Selhurst Park. Um, looking forward to that greatly. Before I get into all of the details around this game, I am going to tell you about uh, my sponsor for this video. I'm very grateful that the guys at Betball have reached out to me again, and um, yeah, it really helps out the channel, it allows me to do things that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise, such as going to all these games, doing giveaways for you guys, and I'm lucky that Betball are the ones that have reached out to me, because again, it is a product that I've used for a couple of years now. I told you about it once last season, and they've added lots of exciting new features to the app, uh, which I'd like to tell you about. So if you are, uh, 18 plus uh, and you are open to betting then please uh, listen on if not then you can skip this part um, so yeah once you get onto the Betball homepage um, it's, so there's some really nice graphics there telling you about some of the tipsters uh, some of the highest yielders some nice stats around some of the games you might want to bet on this weekend um, it's a really nice looking app one of the best features is the Acker Lab so you go into there and it basically helps you build uh, an accumulator in kind of Tinder style so you swipe right if you like the bet you swipe left if you don't then it comes up with the next one um, it tells you little stats about it as you're making your decision um, so the PSG one there Barcelona 1 to 10 they're interested in that but um, you know Leicester Wolves uh, nice little bet there, Burton Doncaster, you can kind of just pick and choose as you go along, it gives you little hints and tips uh, and you can build any uh, accumulator you want um, and once you, get, once you get past a few swipes um, you are often presented with a reward, so here we go, a secret chest which you can open and it will give you an odds boost, there you go, 5% odds boost, so it's really nice gamified, um, really interactive uh, just, I just find it more fun than most betting apps where it's kind of robotic and no personality to it. So I've built this little bet here, uh, a five-fold, uh, using the Acker um, Lab. Uh, just a couple of quid on there, not, not going too crazy, just a bit of fun. Um, so yeah, Liverpool on there of course. I've also put on a boxing bet, um, really into my boxing, and this weekend there's a big card in Belfast. Um, Tyson Fury's in action, Carl Frampton. Um, so a little three-fold here, again, nothing crazy, but... The thing down the bottom there, you can see, you can spin the wheel. Uh, now that wheel, once you spin it, there's more bonuses and insurance and things up for grabs as well. So let's see what we get this time. I'm going to spin the wheel uh, and I could get an odds boost here. Um, here we go. Yep, a 5% odds boost. So you can get up to 30%. So I've been unlucky there, really, to get 5 But it varies from time to time. But yeah, I'm not going to complain about any odds boost. So if you want to check out BetBall, the link is in my description. Of course, you have to be 18 plus and please gamble responsibly. Uh, but yeah, use the link in the description. It means a lot to me. If you could do that, then you know they might want to work with me again, which means you know more content for you guys, more vlogs, more giveaways. Everyone's a winner. So back to the preview. Liverpool uh, look like they're about to get rid of one of their defensive options. Ragnar Klavan Klopp refused to comment on it uh, in the press conference today, but he did confirm that he didn't train. Neither did Dayan Lovren, but he did say that John Matip uh, is back in contention. So um, concerns over um, defensive options, I understand, you know, but I think Ragnar Klavan at this stage of his career, you have to grant the guy his wish if he wants to go and get some first team football in his last few years. 
being a pro. It's a two million pound deal. I mean, God, I think lots of Premier League clubs could have, you know, would have happily spent ten million on Ragnar Klavan. Maybe not, but you know, he's such a valuable squad player for us over the past couple of years, and I think he's, you know, achieved real cult hero status. So it is sad to see him go, but we do move on. We've got Joe Gomez playing well. Matip uh, is on the way back, and look. Klopp wants to promote youth. He wants that gateway between the youth team and the first team. That's why Trent Alexander-Arnold has taken his chance as well as he has done, you know? So I think it's completely fair to give Nat Phillips a go at fifth or sixth choice. You know, Fabinho can play centre-back as well. So I'm not worried about our defensive options, um, you know, especially going into this game with Joe Gomez, absolutely fine. And it is the Palace game that we're talking about right now. And Palace, as I, as I mentioned, did get that 2-0 win over Fulham. If I get out their system here, they did play a flat 4-4-2. Uh, none of their new signings featured. Um, they went with Zahar, who's just signed a new contract, which is surprising news, but fair play to him. Uh, and Benteke up front. They played Schlup uh, and Townsend on either side, so plenty of pace there going down both wings. They went, to, they went for MacArthur and Milivojevic in midfield. Now, they have signed Cheku Kiate from West Ham. Maybe he'll feature. Um, I guess the most impressive signing was Max Meyer. Um, who apparently is going to transition more into a number six role. Be interesting to see if they pack the midfield against us like they did last year when we went to Selhurst Park at 1 2 1. They played Kabai, Milivojevic, and MacArthur. Obviously, Kabai's no longer there. But I was at that game last season at Selhurst Park, and I just seem to remember us being penned in for a lot of the second half. Um, it was. If you've ever been to the away end at Crystal Palace, you really cannot see what's going on down the other end if you're in the away end. Um, but, uh, you know, I was leaning my, I just remember leaning my head around the whole game and just kind of wondering what was going on down there. It was kind of an onslaught. But Mo Salah obviously scored the goal uh, that won the game for us. Um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they line up. Will they go with two up top again uh, with Zahara and Benteke? Um, or might we see some new signings packing out midfield? Might we see Zahar on the wing? Maybe looking to uh, give Trent a tough game? You know, I don't know. Um, we shall see. Uh, Roy Hodgson always loves to get one over on us. Uh, and wouldn't we love to just um, not let that happen? What's the Liverpool lineup going to be, I hear you ask? Lots of people, when I do Instagram lives, make sure you follow me at Ben Might Say. Um, lots of you always ask about what my midfield three is. What's my favourite midfield three? Who's, who's going to be the starting midfield three this season? And I keep saying there is no such thing as a first choice starting midfield three that is going to play every single game for Liverpool. We know that's not the case. We've got Jordan Henderson, we've got Fabinho and we've got Jeannie Van Aldum, all of which can play the deep role. Uh, Jeannie can also play the number eight. Um, uh, as can Naby Keita. As can Adam Milana, as can James Milner, and a few of those guys can play number 10 as well. You know, Oxley, Chamberlain, Shakiri. Uh, obviously, I know Ox is injured, but there's so many options. We're going to rotate uh, very, very often. So, um, my midfield three for this game, I don't want to change too much because I thought the midfield worked brilliantly against West Ham, although they offered almost nothing with Noble and Wilshire in there. Um, I expect Palace to match us up and go for a 4 3 3, in which case. Um, I think maybe Jordan Henderson might come in for this one in place of James Milner. Um, and I'd, I'd expect to keep the physicality of Wijnaldum in there and obviously Naby Keita. So a Henderson, Wijnaldum, Keita 3 is my guess. Um, but if Milner does play, that would be merited because he was terrific against West Ham. Defensively, it picks itself. Allison, Trent, Gomez, Van Dijk, Robertson. And the front three picks itself. Mane, Salah, Firmino. Um, we've got momentum. We've had a whole week off to prepare for this game. We've got no reason to be fearful of Crystal Palace. We've won on our last three visits uh, to Selhurst Park, even if a few of them have been hard fought. Um, they are a good outfit. I don't expect them to be in trouble uh, as far as relegation is confirmed, uh, concerned this season. Um, however, I don't expect them to be anything other than kind of 12th or 15th. So... Yeah, we have got to go and win these sort of games. A draw is no longer enough. The, the standard that City have set last season with 100 points means that you know any game against the bottom um, 13 clubs is must win. Really, you know you have to be you have to be winning 23 of those 26 games realistically, and then you've got to trust yourselves in the games against the big six. Um, so it's no margin for error, even at this early stage of the season. I hate to put that sort of pressure on us. I hate to feel that sort of pressure in myself as well. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a nervy one down there. You know, it's, it's, it's a small pitch. Uh, it's a hostile atmosphere. There's a bit of bad blood between Palace and Liverpool, which I think stems from 13-14, has carried on since. Um, it's, it's never pleasant when you go down to South London. I don't know why. There's just a weird vibe about that place. Um, I don't think they like anyone that comes onto their territory. But yeah, we're going to be there Monday. My score prediction, um, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll win 3-1. Um, I think Palace might even go ahead or they might um, peg us back. 
Um, it's going to be physical, um, which you know maybe James Milner is the man for the job, but it's good to have so many options in there. Maybe Wijnaldum misses out, but I thought he was the best player against West Ham. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about who you think should start in midfield for us. Um, and of course, give me your thoughts on Ragnar Clavin leaving as well. So yeah, 3-1 to the Reds. Goal scorers, Sadio Mane to score two again. Um, that's my draft fantasy bias there. And who else, just, who else is going to score? Big Verge. Big Verge to score from the header from a corner. Why not? He did it. In, uh, he scored in pre-season, so let's carry on that form. Um, but yeah, let me know your score predictions. It's an exciting game. I want to still be top of the league by the time Tuesday comes. Um, Man City playing Huddersfield. Arsenal and Chelsea playing each other. Uh, Man United go to Brighton and Spurs host Fulham. So, um, you know, Chelsea, you know, probably consider Chelsea more of a threat than Arsenal. Um, but, you know, so I guess it's a, it's a should win game for Chelsea. Uh, but not an easy one. Spurs should beat Fulham. Brighton at home to Man United. We saw Brighton beat United uh, last season, so not an easy one for United. But if they can pull through that one, then maybe we should, um, you know, buy into their credentials somewhat as title challengers. Uh, we know City will win. So yeah, we cannot be dropping points. We cannot be falling behind. You know, these four games before the international break were always earmarked as a time for Liverpool to set the marker down. Um, so let's hope we can do that and get maximum points here. Thanks very much for watching, guys. As I say, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Ben Might Say and on Facebook, Snapchat, and Twitter. It's the exact same handle too. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you are new. Uh, thanks again to Betball for sponsoring, uh, and I'll see you next time.